Welcome to today's video, how I turned $17,301 into $49,723 in about four years to purchase my fourth property by age 37. I am Tiffany Thomas, your wealth mentor. I achieved financial freedom in my 30s and became a millionaire at 40. I'm here to help you do that even earlier and easier and without bias because I do not work for any third parties, any financial institutions. I am sharing what I have learned along the way and I'm not going to recommend anything that would not be beneficial to you. All right, so in today's video, we are going to talk about the one single investment account that I used to turn about $17,000 into $49,000 within about four years. And I pulled that money out without a penalty to purchase my fourth property. And I'm sharing the exact investments that I made and when I made them so you can see exactly how this works to invest your money. The very first thing that I did in order to turn 17K into about 49K was to change my mindset. I went from saver to investor. I had been really good at saving my money. I would put money aside every single paycheck when I had my nine to five job and I built up my savings account. I had almost $54,000 sitting in savings at one point. And once I started to realize how important it is to invest my money and I started taking the steps in order to do that, I saw exponential returns with my investments, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. But that's honestly the first thing I did. I had to make that mindset shift so that I could start investing my money instead of just saving my money. And once I knew I had to be investing my money, I had to decide where I wanted to invest that money. So since my goal was to purchase more real estate properties, I wanted to invest my money in an account where I could pull that money out early. So one of the things I did was set up a taxable brokerage account because I can pull money out before age 59 and a half without a penalty. And if you want more information about a taxable brokerage account. I have another video for you. I will leave a link above. You can check it out later on. But nonetheless, I had that account set up and I started putting money into that account. And when I'm working with my clients, I ask them what their specific investment goal is. Sometimes they have more than one investment goal. A lot of, a lot of them want to retire, but some of them also want to have a short-term investment goal. For example, one of my clients wanted to finish their basement sooner than later. So they ended up setting up a taxable brokerage account so that they could pull money out sooner than age 59 and a half to finish their basement. So once I felt like I had the right investment accounts set up, I needed to invest in the stock market inside of those accounts. I couldn't just transfer money over and leave it sitting in cash inside of those investment accounts, which a lot of people do. Unfortunately, they think their money gets automatically invested when they transfer it from their checking account, but that's not the case. We have to choose our own investment investments. And that way we will actually be invested in the stock market inside of our investment accounts. So I try to choose investments that I think are going to grow over the long term. I'm not super risky with my investments. I'm not choosing something that I think will make me a quick win and I can have a lot of money within a month or six months. I'm focused more on that long term strategy. And the investments that I'm going to show you are actually individual stocks. So I invest in about 10 different individual stocks in companies that I think are going to last for the long term, continue to grow over the long term. And then I also invest in an index fund. And if you want to know which one that is, I have another video. I'll leave a link above. You can check it out later on. But that's essentially my investing. I try to keep it as simple as possible. I keep my eye on those 10 individual stocks. And then I invest a lot of money into that index fund. And I don't really have to keep my eye on that fund because I know that it's going to grow over time because if it doesn't, that means something really bad is going on in the world. And I need to forget about investing in the stock market and worry more about my food storage. All right, let's take a look at the actual numbers. I want to show you what I purchased when I purchased it and how much I purchased it for, and then how much I ended up selling it for. So for example, let's start with the first one in 2013 in December, I bought Steve Madden. I just bought one share at $36 and I ended up selling it for four, just over $48. So I made a 34.33% return on my investment. 
And then I also bought Apple. I bought that in October of 2014. And I bought 25 shares at $100.93. And then I sold at $183.59. So I made a return of just over 81%. And then I also purchased Capital One Financial in November of 2014. I purchased four shares of that, of that, and then that was at a purchase price of $81.81. I ended up selling it for $89. So this was my smallest return on these individual stocks at 8.79%. So you can see just by investing our money, we're definitely making more than just keeping it in a savings account even though some savings accounts are around four or 5%. Okay, and then the next stock I purchased was Netflix. I purchased that in November of 2014, and I purchased, well, 100 shares, but I only sold 90 shares of those, so I kept some, and I purchased it for $99.85, $99 and then I ended up selling that for $318.32. So that one actually made me over a 218% return. You can see how huge some of these returns can get in the stock market. That is way more than you are going to make in a savings account ever. <laughs> and then the next one is Facebook. I purchased some in December 2013 and then some in October 2014. And I purchased some of those at $55.71. And then of course the price went up a little bit. So I purchased again at $72.97. And as I'm purchasing these, I'm actually keeping that long-term mindset. I didn't know for sure that I wanted to be buying a house in just a few years. So I'm investing in companies that I think are good and that are going to continue to increase over time. But of course I'm keeping an eye on these investments. And then when I sold Facebook, I sold it for $180.04. So I made the highest return on Facebook, honestly, even though I purchased some at a lower price and then a little bit higher price, I made a 223.17% return on my investment, which is huge. It's huge. And then I also purchased Google. I purchased that toward the end of 2014 and then again in 2015. So these prices were around 567, 548 and $602. And this actually, the stock actually split. So I've adjusted for that amount. So with Google, I made a 85% return, a 93% return, a 74% return way more than I'm ever going to make in a savings account. So you can see down here, the total amount I invested was $17,301.57. And then after waiting for just a few years, selling in May of 2018, I sold a lot of these on the 4th of May and then one on the 9th of May. And I made, almost a 200% return. I made 187.42% return on all of these investments together. Again, we're not going to make that in a savings account. So my profit was $32,426.96. So the amount I received, and this is after fees, we are lucky right now that we are not getting charged commission fees to buy or sell our investments. So the ending amount that I received was $49,728.53. So that is a significant return after just waiting for about five years. And of course, this doesn't always happen within five years. That's why we want to keep that long-term perspective but if we are just keeping our money sitting in a savings account, thinking we are going to make a lot of money by having that 5% or 4% interest rate, that is nothing compared to what we can make in the stock market. A lot of people are thinking, oh, well, the interest rate is so good on my savings account. I'll just leave my money sitting there. 
But when we do that, we are losing out on all of these huge gains, these exponential gains. And if I hadn't invested my money and I left it in the savings account, and honestly, around this time, there were no savings account with around four or five percent interest, it was a lot lower. There is no way I would have been able to purchase my fourth property when I wanted to if I had just left my money sitting in a savings account because I would not have made over 187% return on my money. All right, hopefully that gives you a good idea on some returns that you can see in the stock market. And like I said, not everything is going to increase that much in four or five years. So we always want to keep that long-term perspective. We're going to be a lot better investor if we can do that. But nonetheless, if we never make that switch from saver to investor, we will never see 200% returns or even a 9% return. We will just have to stick with whatever the savings rate is. And that is eventually going to go down. It won't be as high as four or 5%. It'll probably go back down to 2%. So if we have our money invested, we know that over the long term it is going to grow and it will be way more than a savings account. And if you do want help choosing your investments and getting the right investment account set up, I have a free masterclass where I go over how I can help you do those things. I will leave a link below in the description. You can click on that link and check out the free masterclass. And then after choosing my investments for the stock market and letting it grow over time, I selected a property to invest in. I looked at multiple properties and I put in multiple offers. I kept going because I wanted to purchase another property. I wanted to switch some of my stock market investments over to real estate. That was just my preference. I like doing both of those. So I selected the area that I wanted my property to be in and I wanted more than two bedrooms. I wanted four bedrooms because I rent out to singles so I can make a little bit more money that way. And I just started looking for the property, putting in those offers. And eventually I was able to get a property. I was actually the backup offer on my fourth property. And it took a while to get that property, but eventually I was able to because I kept going. I did not give up when I didn't get the first property. So we want to make sure that we are consistent and that we are persistent, that we continue to work toward our financial goals and not give up when things don't look like they are going to pan out. And if you do want more information, more of a step-by-step -step process on how to purchase a rental property, I have another video about that. I will leave a link above. You can check it out later on. But once I was under contract for that property, we were going to close in about 30 days. And that's when I decided to cash out some of those stock market investments like I showed you. And that way I could put that money toward my down payment on my property. And just as a side note, when I was purchasing this property, they wanted to know where the money was coming from for my down payment. So I did have to send them copies of my account, my investment account, and then my savings or my checking account that I had transferred the money into. So just keep that in mind if this is something you are going to do. And those are the steps I took to turn that 17K into 49K in about four-ish years. Comment below and tell me if you are going to start investing your money so you can see it grow exponentially. And make sure and hit that like button and the subscribe button that will really help my channel out and we can get this content out to more people. And don't forget to check out that free masterclass if you want to be successful with your investing. I'll leave that link below in the description. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.